back, we we could call him one last time, but that was it. Welcome once again to an AccuStats video production of an AZB TV free live stream brought to you by Simonis Billiard Cloth, the Cossie Hybrid Cues, and the TAP League System. I'm Jerry Forsyth, in here with my good friend and partner, Mike Howerton. And well, Jerry, it's going to be an interesting match. Yeah, it's um, going to be a showcase of power versus uh, technique. Well, both guys, uh, as, as is always the case, you know, when you get to the end of a tournament like this, both guys are fully capable of stringing together rack after rack after rack, and with a race to 13, uh, they're going to need to. 
none of that nip and tuck, uh, stay close. You know, I expect to see some runs here. I expect to see some, some, at least a four rack lead at one time here. Raj Hundall uses the cut break and scratches off of it into the side pocket. And this is the same way that Rodney Morris started out against Shane, and that didn't turn out too well. So you really don't need to help okay, Shane uh, with his wins. We know Raj is undefeated. Yeah. Shane lost two. No, just one. You're a funny guy. <laughs> See, I, I, I raised the tone of my voice there at the end. It's a question. Um, I think he lost to Mike DeShane, wasn't it? Nope. Dennis Hatch? Nope. Okay, just fill me in. <laughs> CK. Sean Putnam. Oh, Sean Putnam. Okay. Hill Hill. And that was fairly early in the tournament. Shane had a a long run through the one loss side. Well, it's been a very successful run. He's destroyed a lot of opponents. Let's see, his road through the one loss side. Mm -hmm. Larry Neville. Yeah. Bucky Suventhon. Yeah. Earl Strickland. I Dennis, remember that one. Yeah. Dennis Hatch.
I was a little surprised he brought the f the six into play at all. So was he. <laughs> I figured he'd just come across the table. Going he's going to like it. Yeah, he's going to like it a lot. <clears throat> the eight ball takes away the, the simple one rail. I wonder if he can slide behind the eight ball and check the cue ball with left. That's what he's trying to do. See if he gets out of it. Nope. nope. We're on our way to 1-1 one, one here. Yeah. Pretty good bet. Now, have you closed the betting window in the yes, action sir. Room? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Uh, I believe the final odds were one gets you a dollar gets, well, not a dollar, but one point gets you 1.6 points on Raj. One point gets you 0. 0.6 points on Shane. It's paramutual style betting, so the more bets are placed on one player, those odds go down. And the other guy's odds go up. Raj Hundall ties us up at one. Early days on a long road. Surprised Raj's uh, partner in crime is not sitting on the rail watching. Well, he may be on his computer watching. Tell you what, the first time you make the finals at Turning Stone, I'll be sitting on the rail watching. Thank you, buddy. Anything for you. No, he's at the end of the room down there. Okay. He's going to go for that cut break again. He says it's been working for him. But he, he did. He went right for it again, and he teased that side pocket again, but he's made the one ball now. I believe he can see. Yep, he can see enough of the two ball to make it, so it worked that time. Seven to the eight is going to be a little bit of an adventure. I think it'll be fine. It's just that it only has one pocket. <clears throat> He's got to make sure the four ball doesn't get in his way on this three. Let's move over to this left side of the table. And now he can feather between the five and the seven, two rails back out to the center of the table for the four ball. I have no doubt he'll manage that, but it it's still a like touchy little shot. Drag it across. My, my. Hit that nice. Hit that beautifully. Raj has a uh, map of India on his back, on his shirt, and I'm sitting here stunned at how much that map has changed since I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, took Bangladesh out of it. And I think the Pakistan borders have changed a bit. I was going to ask you if Raj called ahead to make sure you didn't wear the same shirt today. <laughs>
rack that time. Mm -hmm. Well, he's trying to stay away from that side pocket, I'm sure. But he's dry. And what kind of an adjustment is he making from the last time he broke? You know, the past couple of times he broke and, and the cue ball uh, uh, flirted pocket. with the side pocket. So he took so, some of the bottom off. Okay. Or he hit the one ball a little more solid. No, less solid. He would hit it more on the edge. Excuse me. always amazes me early in Iraq how the players can make a ball and thread through seven or eight balls, not touch any of them. Yeah, it's, it's always stunned me how accurately they see the path and how accurately they can change the path with English. That's, it's really something to watch this level of player at work. Look at that, he comes out right in line with the shot. Can I draw it just in case the four goes? I don't think so. I think he's going to play this gently enough so that the four just can't go. Because if he hits it hard enough to draw it and the four doesn't go, he could be in a world of hurt. Now watch him prove me wrong. Follow right in on top of it. He sure did. <laughs> Van Boning, you can do that stuff. Now he's got to feel even more comfortable with the long race. Yeah. Like I was saying prior to Moscone Cup, if we could just get Matchroom to make it races to 100. Yeah, nobody would come. I think America would win every one. The tournament might last a month, but... I think Ralph Zuckay and Mika Eminem might want to argue with you on that. They like long races, too. <clears throat> Look at that. You could place it better with your hand. Shane coming back. Three to two. About 20 minutes for five games. We watched a match earlier in this oh. tournament that was 70 minutes for five games. 80 minutes. 80, no, what, 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 Hour and 20 minutes for what? five games. Oh. 80 minutes. Uh, well, I was watching the player who shall not be named, and his race to nine took two hours and 40 minutes. It's the last match of the night, and everybody else, the room, room was empty, and I'm sitting here alone scoring this last match, and it was painful because these guys that look at the, whoa, who look at the patterns, and then get down on the shot, and then get up and walk around the table and look at the patterns, get down on the shot, and get up, it'll drive you nuts. And what I really love is the... Let me stare at the rack for five minutes. Move. All right, now, what was the logic behind that push? Um, yeah, I, I don't know, because... If you visualized a shot from there, then why didn't you just shoot it? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to get it back, so we'll see what he had in mind. Does that put him in position for a carom on the seven that he didn't have before, perhaps? Oh, I don't know. Talk about taking a swing at it. That would really be a, a wild swing. Nope. I think he's just going to bank it, stick it. Well, no, maybe he's just going to go long rail to long rail. Did not want to collide with that ball and certainly didn't expect it to fall. The 2-8-9 does not line up. And I don't believe the 8 goes by the 9 to the corner. Yeah, but does the 2, is the 2 on the tangent line to the corner off the 8? Can he just hit that 2 ball full and have it go into the corner? That looks like a possibility. 
He's taking a look at it. Well, you knew if there was a shot there, Shane would find it. I think the thing he doesn't like about the two in the corners, he might have to hit it with a little bit of top to try and transfer just the slightest amount of draw to the two ball. like that's the shot he's going to try, though. But he's hitting the draw. Maybe he needs to send the two ball forward? Yeah, I don't know why he hit that with the draw. But I certainly do not understand the game as well as that man. <laughs> you should not question the gods. That's with the lower G, folks. Don't get upset. Well, this is no walk in the park, but I still expect um, Raj to get through it, although I'm not quite sure what that angle is. I would have thought he would want to be straighter in than that. Yeah. Watch out. He has hung that ball. And That's you're right, he needed to be straighter than that. He was trying to cheat the pocket to stay down on the six. And, well, see what happens to cheaters. <laughs> okay. How many guys would have made that ball and just drawn back an inch or two? and not had the angle that they needed on the six. Yeah. I'm not saying at this level of play. I mean, at this level of play, I think most of the guys would have played that shot that way. But No, we're talking about league night. Yeah, league night. <laughs> league night, they'd have stopped the ball, half of them. The other half would have followed it in. This nine ball will tie us up. Is that correct? Yes. These gentlemen are doing everything they can to make my prediction of a four-rack lead not come true. Yeah, somebody will catch a gear here pretty quick. Yeah, it's only a race to ten from here. Has Shane won this event before? Not while I've been coming here. I don't think he has, then. It's a tough event to win. Yeah. Unless your name is Johnny Archer. Yeah, he's won six of them. But he hasn't done well um, last year and a half here, even though he's, he's playing.
Five fits right through there. It must. Has Shane always played with a glove? No, he started playing with a glove actually this summer after he played an event in China where it was real humid. And he tried the glove there and really liked it because, as you know, it makes every shot feel the same, whether it's humid outside, dry outside. You never have to use powder. He ran up too far. Yeah, he did. I, I actually have never used a glove, so I wouldn't know. I, I use a glove all the time. I, I, I really like the way they feel. Hmm. Not many of the pros use gloves, though. Well, more and more. You know, Strickland's been using one for years. And, yeah, I know, both hands. Hmm. But um, I'm seeing more and more gloves. I saw a lot of gloves at the U.S. Open. I think this ball goes. Yeah, I think it does, too. I still remember the story about when Corey came through Phoenix. Corey and Troy Frank looking for action. Had yeah. the glove on the wrong hand. Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll get you some action. A lot of people say it, it looks um, less than manly to wear okay. a glove. But my, uh, it, my ego doesn't see that. It, uh, Whoa, can you believe <laughs> The ball's <laughs> racing. Oh, and now Raj is going to ask if there was something... Raj thinks there was a foul of some kind there. I don't know what the foul would have been. Uh, yeah, he's probably thinking double hit, but there was just a double hit between the balls. That, yeah. That's fine. That was a time shot. That's exactly what he was trying. Well, Raj has always said Shane misses the balls better than anybody. Didn't miss that one. Raj just can't believe it. Yeah, he's giving Shane quite a look here. But that brings Van Boning's lead up to two, leading five to three. Shane's grinning over that one. <laughs> Things are going your way, Shane. They're really going your way. I didn't think the QO was going to get back in the way. Shane's working out with weights. He looks like he's... Yeah, he's buffing up. I didn't want to be the first one to say that. You know, to, at back home, they'll question my manliness and, you know, what are you doing looking at Shane's arms and that sort of thing. Actually, back home, they question my manliness anyway. I think all the American players, not all the American players, but the, the better American players, I think, are, are getting a bit more serious about their, their fitness. I mean, yeah. they, they see the success of the Europeans. Yeah. Dry break, but not much to work with here. I mean, he's got a, a nice safety to send the one ball past the eight, put the cue ball down there up against the eight. There's a banger, like a combination there, but I don't know if he'd take it on. A little early in the match to be that aggressive, I would think, as he takes on the combination. No, I don't know. I can't tell where he's aiming. He's got to think. I think carefully about that shot. Yeah. Well, it looked like he was.
I really just get Mike numbers that he can like walk around the table when they're racking. Yeah, like a regular. Yeah. We should try that maybe at the U.S. Open sometime. Rack girls. Yeah. Yeah, we should try that sometime. I think that's exactly what's missing from the game. <laughs> Just think of the Fortune 500 companies are saying, that's it. Yeah. I was watching a, a match of Shane's earlier, and I was questioning um, his watch. Is that a watch or a bracelet? Or? On Shane? Yeah. Is it a medical bracelet? I don't know. It's not a watch. No, it's not a watch. Or is it one of those energy? I know because those are made of metal. That's plastic. I think it's probably a, one of those charity bracelets or something. It's going to come up dry, but Shane's not going to have a whole lot to work with. Although I fully believe that a pro player who has a full path to the object ball is at a distinct advantage <laughs> starting a safety battle. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he can use that, too, to stop right there if he can send the one ball away to hide. I don't know if he got him or not. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Once again, Mike Suglin does not allow jump cues at this tournament. But you can do like we did before jump cues. You can jump when you play with you. I think Raj is wishing that jump cues were allowed here. You like the rule? Yeah, I do. I don't like jump cues. <clears throat> I think they're gimmicky, but that's just a my opinion. A lot of people love them. Look at that shot and the nine ball fall. <laughs> That's uh, coming with something out of nothing there. The last time he plays that safety. Yeah, we don't have to announce the score anymore. Zuglin does that. Hey. Tied at five. Perfect. Well, you know what they say. You hit the ball, sometimes you get rewarded. Cold up here this week in upstate New York. Not as much snow as last year when we were here. Oh, no, hardly any snow, just cold. When we were here last year, we were buried in snow. Boy, do I miss summer. Just uh, the tube tops and the short skirts. And I know they make me look a little <laughs> gay, but, you know. You know, I'll take the uh, tube tops and the short skirts, but I live in Arizona. I'll pass on the missing summer thing. 120 gets old in a hurry. <laughs> There's a solution for that desert dweller. Yeah, would that be move to where the humidity is like 50%? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. You should give Georgia a try. I'm telling you. Watch out. I don't think there's any question he can make it. He can come off the six. Just figure out where Whitey's going to go. I'm going to go for this three ball. That eight ball sitting there? No. I'm going to lock him up. But Rod really doesn't care for safeties as much as let me swing at it. <laughs> I like that safety, though. I think he took away a lot of the options that Shane was counting on. Oh, 
boy, he's, he's got to come down the foot rail first, which means he's got to cue over the eight ball, unless he wants to come into this left side rail and try and go out three rails to hit that three. And I don't like his odds on that one. <coughs> Africa hit it. That's easy to say since he's not here. I have actually seen that thing miss a few kicks. Yeah? Not many. Not many. Yeah, it's a shame he doesn't get to the States that often anymore. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, I don't think he's been over here since uh, Derby. Right, well, what are we doing here? Two, three. Oh, okay. Uh, and make a seven. Make seven. And oh. Rod is sick. He is just sick. Well, Raj has got no room to talk after that. Yeah, his last win uh, takes away any complaint he might have. Uh oh. Ooh. I thought he was going to bobble ball that one. I do hope Efren will be here for Derby. He usually makes it over for that. Just wouldn't be the same without him there. Although Alex is doing his best to uh, yeah, he's doing a good job. fill any gap. Yeah, he's taking the crown. Did you hear anything about why Alex wasn't here? Yes, I know exactly why he's not here. Well, enlighten us. He's uh, committed. In fact, that's why he wasn't at the Moscone Cup last week. He planned on coming to that. The first... Let's six five. Five. Is a chain five. Now leading six to five. But um, he got invited to a uh, high dollar celebrity tele televised poker game, either in the Philippines or no, I think it's in um, yeah, it's in Manila. So okay. he's he's sitting at a table with a pair of sevens right now. Well, that would make sense. You and I have been to Manila, and in Manila. Alex and Efren and Francisco and Ronnie, they are major celebrities. Huge. Uh, you know, over here, they could walk down the, you know, the middle of Times Square and nobody would know who they were. Out there, they can't walk anywhere. Yeah. Nine ball is rolling, but not quite toward the pocket. It does set up, not too far away. You think? Yeah, I don't. I don't like the one nine at all. Not with the table laying out the way it is. So no doubt Shane will shoot the one nine. <laughs> well he's got he's got maybe three quarters of a pocket there. Yeah, he does.
Yep. Ralph's in the Hall of Fame. Earl's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Shane Van Boney, I think, will be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, not based on what he's accomplished so far, but, but at the end of his career. I think he'll be voted in on his whenever he turns 40. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Especially since he's probably going to put a couple of world championships under his belt between now and then. Well, he's got he's to play better uh, in international events. That is the one part of his resume that is a little lacking. Just getting started. Oh, yeah. 20... 29. Well, he's got 11 years. Okay. So you've been eligible for the Hall of Fame for how long? What else do you want to talk about? <laughs> how about them Cardinals? <laughs> no. Not an aspiration for I. No. In all seriousness. In all seriousness, I think the Hall of Fame should be reserved for players. I'm not even sure we should have a meritorious service category, but we do. So, I will just say that knowing you as long as I have, you have done a lot of service to the game. Well, you know, I know that there are people who um, don't have the same opinion that you have about some parts of the game. Yes. But... You have you have looked out for this game for an awful long time. Yeah, but I enjoy doing that. So it's it's not like I've had to do any drudgery in, <laughs> in my pool career. Oh, look at this! Where is he going to land? Yeah, that's uh, a Hall of Fame shot. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh no! Uh, this may have to go to a second vote. Yeah. What a roll. Hmm. I'm looking for a way for him to find a, a place to duck, and I, I don't see it. He's going to one rail make the 2 5. Yeah. I think Raj had just Massé around the 4. I saw Raj play a couple of nice Massés earlier today. He does Massé the ball, though. Yeah. Speaking of Massays, yes. where is Morrow? Oh, Ishmael Paez? Yeah. I haven't heard anything from him in years. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't either now that you mention it. I think he might have been the best Massay player, as far as nine ball, in this generation that I've seen. He was darn good, I, and I, ha I don't... Somebody's going to have to check me on this, and you can come back and blast me in the chat room, which we can't see because I can't see it. But um, I understand that Moro, he missed that ball. Missed He's given it. ball in hand. Moro, in Spanish, translates to soft hands. Okay. So that would, um, you know, that would give credence to his mass A skills. I don't see any real problems here. No, not really. Draw back off the three and you're in line for the four and you're good to go there. Pool gods are doing everything they can to keep this match close. Yeah, this will bring us back within one, right? Yeah. Van Boning's already halfway home. He was making darn sure he didn't overrun that draw. The guys that are playing that our little game this tournament are just on pins and needles this whole match. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna win the 
prettiest set of signed balls. We've gotten them signed by the top 16 finishers here. So there are balls in that set that are signed by Earl Strickland and Ralph Sukay. All of these guys, of course, Rodney Morris. It's going to be a very nice set for somebody's wall. And we actually have not said anything on the forums yet about what first prize was. Oh, we hadn't? No. Oh, I'm sorry if I blew the surprise. Well, I I wanted to wait until we knew that we had gotten past a couple players that I thought might be difficult to get their right. signature. Yeah. You know, and then we might have to fall back on, well, we got the top eight or something yeah. like that. But yeah. sure enough, you went out there and got all the tough players. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I tell you, it was an uncomfortable situation several times because don't know where a player is going to finish until he has lost his last match. So you're right. going up to all these guys who just lost, saying, can I have your autograph on this ball? <laughs> and I got some rather tart replies. Well, like you were saying, there's a ball signed by Strickland, Hatch, Putnam. I mean, let's face it, none of these guys like to lose. Oh, boy. If you like to lose, you've got no business being out here. That's the one thing I love about a pool tournament. The week that it starts, there are 128 guys convinced that they're the best player in the field, <laughs> as it should be. That's going to turn out well. So, uh, like I had posted in the forums earlier, we'll definitely do the game again, but we won't offer this grand prize again. Yeah, this is a once-in-a-lifetime grand prize. I will not go through that again. But we'll have some nice prizes. We've, oh. got, we've got great sponsors who are always happy to help. And thank goodness for them. See any options here? Drop back 10 and punt? Yeah. And I guess he's got to go one rail through that window. Well, I mean, he's trying to see if he can go the other way with it. He may have to mass say the ball before it gets to the pocket, yeah. He hit it. He hit it. But he, he left it. sold it out. <laughs> well, I mean, if you leave a shot like that, six balls on the table, all he's got to do is get out of there to get on a two. not bump the five. He doesn't like being jacked up, but I don't think it's going to bother him that much. Uh, he would like to be somewhere else. Here comes the ref to make sure. i tell you what, to be sure, why not just lay the bridge on the other side of the nine? These guys better turn something on if they're going to get a four-rack lead. They're just trying to make me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. Usually it doesn't take much. <laughs> uh, this game will make liars out of any commentator. But then for vengeance, we always have the commentator's curse we can lay on. Well, we did that a lot in the Rodney and Raj match. He'll make this ball. Oops, bobble, bobble, bobble. He hits him like a champion. Thunk, thunk. Yeah, I'm just cute. <laughs> oh, man. Oops, he just took a flash camera in the face. Oh, and the guy who did it's getting a ribbing on the rail. Had Rod missed that ball, he would have gotten more than a rib. We are tied up. Okay, everybody's halfway home now. And we're an hour in. Let's say we all.
Yeah, nine ball can get can get boring if.
pan flute CD. And you'll be happy to know, CDs make great frisbees. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. You're coming behind the nine. Yeah. And watch the cue bucket use the six as a blocker. Nope. He left a shot, but not an easy one. Easy enough. When you've got Hitman on your shirt, <laughs> they're all easy. You better shoot well. <laughs> I had a buddy who had a, an eight ball tattooed on his arm with a vulture sitting on it. Oh. And you, you figure, you know, if you've got that tattoo, you got to hit him pretty good. Well, yeah, if you've got a shirt that says Hitman on it, you better hit him good, too. I tell you what, an eight ball tattoo is a good way to kill your action. He, uh, he said he did not go around hustling and that sort of thing. He would just walk into a room and say, I play better than everybody in this room. Anybody want to prove me wrong? And they would line up. Well, that's the way uh, a very good player does it. Ronnie Wiseman, he walks into a pool room and flips a quarter to the bartender and says, I'm the best player you've ever seen. Make a call. <laughs> I'm here to play for money. So with, uh, with our good friends at TAR and, and the challenge matches they've done, yeah. uh, are we pretty much in agreement that Shane is the best action player alive right now? Yeah. Until Although, somebody uh, steps up and proves them wrong, you've got to say that. Eight to eight, we're knotted now. He's, he's played a lot of guys on, on TAR, and he's always proven, I mean, not every time, no, he lost to Earl on the lost on the ten footer. On the ten footer, yeah. And hasn't he lost to Alex before? Yes. I think he's got. Uh, I, I think he's got his hands full for this next one. I don't know what the race is. Who's he got? Bustamante. Ooh. I all, all I caught was just the names, and I didn't see what the specifics were. But you got to figure it's going to be probably races to twenty five, three days. You know, probably the same sort of game. Yeah, but Bustamante, as great as he is, hasn't really made a huge mark on the pool scene the last three or four years. Well, except for winning that World Nine Ball Championship. Yeah, one more, yeah, one World Nine Ball Championship. But, and he's quite a few years older than he Shane. is. He's 42 or 43 now. Nothing on the break and no real shot. We're going to have a little safety battle. I, I I realize that everything you say is true yeah. in, in regards to this match, not everything. Yeah. But still, he doesn't have the the aura of of Efren. Yeah. But there's still an awful lot of aura there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and I remember in the Camel Tour one year, they just couldn't touch him. He. All those Filipino players play great. I mean, we were in we were in Manila maybe four or five years ago and overheard Nils Fyan at dinner one night mm -hmm. saying that he was gambling with guys that he'd never even heard of and they were beating him. Yeah. Well, they've, they've really got some great up-and-coming players now. I mean, new name to many people is Carlo Beato. But remember that name because that kid's coming up strong. Well, there's a long line of them. Yeah. Yeah, I like this generation from the Philippines. Watch out. What Side pocket. Eight the cue ball. The two ball is open. But is the four ball open? Well, ah, we is need, it going to matter? We don't need to worry about the four ball. 
That's something you don't see very often. A player just scratched dead in the hole. I wonder if he got a little slide, because I'm sure he meant to come below that mark. Nine eight. Mr. Van Boney. Say our room scorekeeper is <laughs> not on the job. He's right over there. Hmm. I don't like that two nine. Let's see if Shane does. <coughs> he may not have a choice. I don't see an easy way to come down and put the cue ball between the two and the nine. Not that that would do anything for him. No, he'll take the two nine.
percentage. Mm -hmm. These guys know their shot percentage. <clears throat> and if it's 60-40, safety is better, they're going to go for the safety. If it's 50-50, they'll go for the shot. Ooh, did he leave a dead combo? Yeah, it looks that way. I'm not really sure Shane was interested in being patted on the back there and everything. He's got a tournament to win here. Yeah. I think Rod feels like the fates have turned against him. there brought the nine into play when it didn't need to. Not that I'm going to question Shane's shot selection ever. You no, know, sometimes we just wonder out loud trying to learn. <clears throat> Looks out from here. Although I have experienced, you know, I've seen some things at this tournament, and, and you see them at every tournament, that, that restore your faith in, uh, you know, pro players being human. I've, I've seen pros not get out in places where you'd think there was no chance they couldn't get out. Usually from an over-rolling position into a snooker. Mm -hmm. I've, seen them too. I've seen them, you know, like that scratch that Raj just made. Yeah. You know. It happens. Almost there, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else about it because I know I'll jinx it. 11 to 8, and Van Boning breaking. Hundall is in a deep, deep hole. Shane seems to have gotten his breakdown. So much with the uh, cut break, he's just hammering the one ball and jumping his cue ball a little bit, keeping it right there in the center of the table. Two. And the five ball could mess him up here. Yes, it could. He's got to be careful with that shaft. Those things aren't cheap. I imagine he has a supply. You think? Yeah. I think that was part of his deal with QTAC. I think so. I asked Earl one time how many shafts he had for his Q. He said, I don't know, maybe 200. <laughs> <laughs> question is how long it took him to go through 200 shafts. Yeah. We've seen him use up a few. I wanted that ball to stop earlier. if it passes. I don't think it does. I mean, he doesn't seem to be in a position where there's a, a real easy safety. Like he needs an easy safety. Two five might go. Yeah, I don't know.
Rogers telling us he doesn't think he could buy a roll in a bakery. <laughs> that was pretty unlucky. That was brutal. How do you get into that corner and not hit the one ball? All right, now, one to the two. Well, I mean, the, the, the problems aren't over getting from the one to the two. Well, he's got him on one foul. <laughs> now, I saw a player this week three foul their opponent. Yeah. But you don't see it very often in one of these tournaments. No, you don't. But it's fun when you do it. Oh, well, yeah, for everybody but the person who got three fouled. Yeah. Well, and so much of the time the players can see it coming and they just break open. Yeah. <clears throat> Was it last year at the Masters that Mike Davis three fouled uh, Ralph? I have to tell you I don't remember. I've seen a few pool matches since then. I'm thinking Ralph's probably not been three fouled a whole lot of times in his life. Yeah. yeah, he makes the cue ball dance pretty good. I'd go out on the limb and say he's played in a couple more tournaments than I have. Yeah. And I've probably been three fouled more often than he has. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shane changes his plan. <clears throat> Boy, he's got a lot of traffic to pass. Well, there's a big, big window there between the three and the eight. Although I don't think he's going to go for that. He's not going for that. He's going out two rails. Yeah. He's going to try and hit the third one. That's it. He's going to get there. He sure did. Now he's just going to get on the three. If he can make this ball and come between the seven and the five, he's right on the three. That. This rack would put Mr. Van Boning on the hill. Yes, it would. And then if he won the next rack, he'd win by four. Still trying. A man's got to try. Come on, Raj. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh. sure that's the pocket he intended, but he'll take it. Makes his work easy. It's been a long week here at Turning Stone. But we always enjoyed coming to this tournament. The venue is just gorgeous. Lots of great food. Mike Zuckman puts on a good tournament. He did it without uh, his partner in crime, Dana Buffalo, this time. But Dana was heavily missed. That's why Mike didn't play in this event, because he had to pick up all the weight that Dana carries. <clears throat> yeah, they always take good care of us here. Yeah, they do. Although, uh, Holden Chin stepped up and did quite a bit of work this week on this event. We would like to acknowledge that.
who we missed dearly this week. Yeah, I heard he was in uh, California. Oh, is he? Yeah, I, and he was signed up for the tournament. Yeah. He's playing a two-way shot here. He wants to get the one ball safe. But he's he really going to really take a shot at gonna this. Take a shot. Yeah. Is he going to try it off the seven or directly into the pocket? He's aiming directly into it. This can't be more than a 20% shot. I wouldn't give you that much. Well, I mean, I'm thinking Shane is hitting it. If I were hitting it, it wouldn't be more than a 2% shot. Well, he got his safety, which I didn't think he would, but it's good speed control. I think he left the edge of the one. <clears throat> He doesn't mind safety battles. No, but Raj got his wish. He got back to the table. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. no, he can't see the edge. He's got to go two rails. And he missed it, and that's ball in hand, my friends. Yeah. And that should be all she wrote. line is in sight. Shane doesn't miss very often that close to the finish line. No, in fact, it reminds me of, of Earl like that. The closer he gets to the finish line, the more fire he has in his stick. Speaking of Earl, briefly, as yeah. Shane finishes off this match, mm -hmm. we were talking about... Uh, you and I were having this conversation a month or so ago about Darren Appleton mm -hmm. won the U.S. Open back-to-back -back undefeated. Right. And he was wondering if he was the only player that had won it undefeated back-to-back. Uh, -back. And no, Nick Varner won it back-to-back. -back. Right. But Nick mentioned to me that in the five times that Earl won the U.S. Open, he was undefeated all five times. Right. Never, never won it from the one loss. Right. And Nick actually had the hot seat the year prior to winning back-to-back -back yeah. and was double-dipped by Mike LeBron. Right. Otherwise, he would have won it three times in a row. Yeah. And I'm sure Darren would disagree with this, but I don't think anybody was ever going to win it three times in a row. Well. <clears throat> yeah, I think Darren would disagree with that, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, no, he does. It's a, a amazing odds against that with all the players that are in the U.S. Open, 250-some. Right. From everywhere. From everywhere. Toughest field. You know, usually a winner gets lucky on the brackets and gets a, a fairly easy draw early in the week, but that didn't really happen for Darren. He played some tough matches. This is looking like... Uh, There's the towel. There's the towel. <laughs> it's all over. Shane Van Boning has taken Turning Stone Classic 18 with a score of 13 to 9 over Raj Hundall. And a great champion he is. So, for AZB TV, AccuStats Video Productions, Lucasi Hybrid Q, Simonis Cloth, the TAP League System, and all the sponsors who make this event possible, I'm Jerry Forsyth alongside Mike Howerton. Good night, folks. We really enjoyed having you watch. Hi, everybody. This is Matt. Everyone, we do have some schedules up there. Like I said, the tentative date for the next event is August 23rd to the 26th. First of all, uh, it's a wonderful tournament. Uh, you go to our website or grab one of our schedules here. We'll get it from the website address grassleinballsports.com, and you'll be able to uh, check for updates. But it was an excellent project for us. And we're going to have some great DVDs from this event. Uh, I'm getting a notice that you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Ambient too loud. Okay, I'll lower that. Get rid of the ambient.
Okay, I'm just looking for some comments on the uh, on the net here. Can you hear me now? Better? <laughs> Better, yup. <laughs> okay, so once again, uh, on behalf of AZ Billiards and AccuStats, I want to say how uh, thrilling it was to be here at Turning Stone. Uh, they're great hosts. And uh, there's some special thanks that I'd like to give. Uh, of course, Jim Fredericks, who works with AccuStats on a daily basis, works his 80 hours a week and takes care of all the Internet uh, business. Uh, special thanks to him. Um, also, Curly Steve and Oldzilla, they're, they're always with us and always supportive. Of course, Bob Enslow, he, uh, he, um, he put something on a Facebook uh, work on this tournament and he did a fabulous job promoting it so uh, special thanks to Bob Enslow and uh, I was here with Julian Robertson Julian uh, is our uh, main man on the road he's our supervisor when we go on the road and uh, it was a two-man effort here from AccuStats Julian and myself and uh, we had some you know some screw-ups which are normal but uh, we're very happy with the finished product and want to thank everybody and the thousands of people who viewed this uh, free streaming. So on behalf of AZ Billiards and IQ Stats, uh we had a wonderful time and thanks for your support. Good night.